during one of my lessons, I can still remember how there was this tutor and he was explaining the difference between these two concepts, but he brushed over these two concepts so quickly that I couldn't quite understand the difference between them. So I remember I just, you know, put my hand up and I said, I'm really sorry, can you explain the difference between those two again? Because it really wasn't clear. He then walked over to my desk. This was in front of the entire class. He came up to me and he said, there is this thing called Google. You can use it to look for your question. And I thought to myself, why the hell am I paying to be here when one of the tutors here is telling me, go and Google? So I'm always, always, always receiving requests from people asking me to talk about my university experience in England and also abroad. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Now, I have studied in the UK. I also did a year abroad in Spain. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And I've also studied at another university in England for my master's degree. So this could be a very, very, very long video. Go and grab yourself a cup of tea, turn on the subtitles if you need to, and just use this as listening practice. So before I get started telling you about my university life and education, welcome back if you are a returning subscriber. If you are not and you are completely new here, then hello and welcome. If you are interested in improving your British accent and pronunciation and learning more about England and the culture here, then consider hitting that subscribe button. I post new videos every single Friday, so that's that. Let's get started with um, Freshers' Week. I think that's probably where everything begins in <laughs> university life. So university in England normally lasts for three years. Before you start your first year, you will arrive a little bit earlier because what normally happens in England is you actually move away to university. It's not very common to actually go to the university that's closest to you and that's in your town or city. Many, many, many students in England and all throughout the UK, they actually move away to go closer to the university. This is simply because, one, you may want to be more independent, you may want to live away from your parents, and two, maybe the university in your town or city doesn't do the course that you're interested in, so you might have to move away. Also, depending on what you want to study, um, certain universities are considered more prestigious than others, so let's say you want to study law, they are quite snobbish about it, so you do have to study at particular universities if you want to be considered as, um, I don't like saying it, but like, uh, like genuine or real, oh, it's just so stupid, but that's how it is in England, you know, so if you want to study law and you want a good job and you want to make lots of money and you want to be considered more seriously and, and so on, then you have to do your degree at, you know, higher level universities, what are known as uh, red brick universities. If you go to uh, another kind of university which is not considered prestigious enough, then you you may be looked down on. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. Um, so university degrees normally last for three years. Before you start, you will arrive early, as I said, and normally you arrive about two weeks early, maybe one week early. And during those two weeks, or one week, depends on the university, you will have freshers or freshers week. So during this time, it's basically where you meet other people, so other students as well. You get settled, you get familiar with your surroundings, your new city, your new room, your new roommates and so on. And maybe you start like uh, joining some clubs and societies with things that you're interested in. And that's that, that is freshers. So it is just essentially a week or two weeks dedicated to helping students make friends at university. That's all that's for. Now, I absolutely loved freshers because it gave me the chance to, you know, go out to clubs, go out to bars for the first time, 
Uh, it gave me the chance to, I don't know, join different clubs and societies that I never thought I'd be able to do. And yes, I got to do so much. It was great. I love my freshers experience. Um, some people do go absolutely crazy during freshers and they go out drinking like every single night and they go out partying every night, which is fine. You know, if you're not into that, then that is fine. There are plenty of other activities going on which do not have any drinking or alcohol or anything involved. So don't feel pressured during freshers week if people say things like okay let's go out for drinks let's go on a pub crawl which is when you go to different pubs in one night um don't feel pressured to go out drinking there are plenty of other activities to do but do be warned that in the uk if you're not a big drinker drinking culture in the uk at university is still quite a big Thing. It doesn't mean that all students are drunk all the time. It just means that, you know, it's one way that we like to spend our time and have fun. That is it. So when Freshers Week is over, you're all settled and you're happy with your new flatmates and whatever, then you start your classes. Now, the first year of your degree, your grades don't actually count towards your final grade. It's essentially just a nice transition period where they just get you into the into the rhythm of writing essays and taking exams and things like that. Now this might change for different universities, it may even be different now, but at least at my university the first year grades didn't count. So I mean you could literally just pass everything with the minimum kind of grade to pass and you'd be fine. But in the second and third year your grades do actually count so you do need to work quite hard. So in my personal experience during the first year of uni I really enjoyed it. I learned so much about my topic. For those of you who don't know I studied English language and linguistics. What was great about my course is that I could also choose a language um, in the second semester. So I actually chose to do a module in British Sign Language and I had to do an exam in sign language and it was, it was, it was good actually. I think it was probably one of the exams where I was the least nervous about. I remember my tutor, oh, she was so great. She was just so funny. She was born deaf. Um, so, I mean, sign language was her first language and so she would like teach us some slang and things like that. And it, it was just great. I really, really liked uh, that part of my course. Um, in terms of, you know, non-academic stuff, so like going out and um, like my living experience, I lived in two different places <laughs> in my first year. So in the first part of, of the academic year, I should say, so in the first semester, I lived with a group of girls who were not the nicest, they were very, very bitchy. For some reason, every single time I went home at the weekend, they would just literally uh, have a little meeting in one of the girls' bedrooms and just talk about me. <laughs> I'm glad that I was interesting enough to talk about, but yeah, that was a little bit strange. So they just became really horrible, negative, bitchy, I just didn't like being around them. Um, I mean, we had nothing in common and I guess the only thing those guys had in common was talking shit about me. So <laughs> whatever floats your boat, I guess. But yeah, I ended up leaving because I was quite sick of their behavior. It was just too childish for me. And so I decided to move and I moved to a different flat. Um, I had to go through this uh, process with the university where they tried to find out what happened, why I was moving and stuff like that, because it's not easy um, but I'm very very glad that I did move I found a new place within like two weeks so well done York St. John for <laughs> moving me very quickly out of that original hellhole and into a very very nice flat with new people this time it was a mix of males and female students and it was great it was great being mixed because I think sometimes when you're in a flat with just girls, at least in my experience, it can become very, very bitchy. Um, so I was quite happy to be in a kind of mixed flat. 
Now my second year was different to probably many other people's because I actually decided to study abroad. I was supposed to go abroad for one semester, <laughs> so that's essentially from like Christmas, um, sorry, from September until Christmas, but they put me down for one year. So I stayed in Spain for one year. And I can still remember I got there and it was in the middle of a heat wave and it was so hot. I'd never been abroad in my life. Um, <laughs> it was just terrible. It was so terrible. I, I couldn't deal with the sexism. I couldn't deal with like walking down the street and people, you know, whistling or making stupid comments or trying to flirt with me when I was like in the supermarket. Like I just never ever experienced that in my life. And I found it such a huge culture shock. Um, I felt incredibly uncomfortable. My anxiety levels were like level 5,000 the entire time. <laughs> I just felt so uncomfortable. I wanted to leave. And I remember I was actually torn between going to Canada and uh, Spain and uh, I just remember thinking why didn't I go to Canada I really really wish I'd gone to Canada instead of Spain I ended up contacting York St John and I contacted my Canadian university the Canadian university not my Canadian university <laughs> but the Canadian university that was partnered with York St John uh, the University in Canada said, yep, you can come here in the second semester, that's no problem. But York St. John essentially didn't want to go through all the paperwork and they didn't want to send me over to Canada. So you lost the point there, York St. John. <laughs> anyway, I didn't get to go to Canada. I remember speaking to my dad at Christmas and saying, I really, really, really don't want to go back uh, to Spain because I hate it so much. And my dad was like, just go and then put the experience down on your CV and just never go back to Spain. That's it. But something changed. In the second semester, I started making more friends with local people instead of going out with the Erasmus students. I wasn't much of a fan of the Erasmus students because all they did was go out drinking all the time. Again, they were very bitchy. They were very clicky. You know, I just really didn't like them that much. And so I stopped going out with them because I just got so bored of going out and like drinking in bars all the time. It was just boring and the conversation was boring. Um, I'm not saying that they were boring people, but they just weren't my kinds of people. So I started making friends with some Spanish and Catalan people from that town. And I found my experience in the second semester to be so much better. It was so good, in fact, that I actually didn't want to leave. I decided to become an au pair during the summer and that was it. It's also during that time when I started teaching. So I was um, basically working as a, what was it? Like a language assistant during my time there. But instead of getting paid, I essentially worked for free and they, uh, they gave me credits. So I took it as like a class, you could say, um, and that was that. That's how I basically got into teaching. Now, in terms of studying while I was in Spain, it was completely different to when I was at York St. John. So in England, they do not spoon feed you the information. They basically give you a very, very basic general overview of the topic and then they'll give you suggested reading and you have to go out and research on your own. However, in Spain, I was shocked to find that everything was literally given to me, like just, you know, they would have these slides and presentations and everything and they would just tell me everything and then say, remember this for the exam, you got an exam in two weeks. It was crazy, I'd never had, I'd never had so many so many exams in such a short amount of time you know there was one class I did where there was an exam every single month and it was crazy and yeah it's just not a good way to test students it's really not having an, ex having an exam every month is not a healthy way or <laughs> it's just not a good way to test students because you just retain information for a short period of time and then you need to forget it quickly and start remembering for the next exam which is in like three or four weeks. It was just 
absolutely crazy, but I studied hard and I did well, so I can't complain too much there. <laughs> So in my final year, I moved back after my lovely summer in Spain as an au pair. I moved back, I think it was like the weekend before I was supposed to start university. And during your third year of your degree, you need to write a 10,000, I think it's 10,000, oh, I needed to double check that, but never mind. You, need to, you needed to write uh, a 10,000 word dissertation. So a dissertation is your final research project and it will look something like this. <laughs> so this is actually my master's dissertation, this is not my undergrad dissertation, that is hiding somewhere in a box and I have no idea where it is, but you will be asked to write a paper about this size. Now this one is a little bit bigger because it's 15,000 words. To be specific, to be specific, this one is uh, 16,000 words in total. Um, but this was again for my masters and I think it was uh, 15,000 words was the workout here but the oh god I can't speak but for the undergrad I, I'm pretty sure it was 10,000 although I, I will check that and add a note somewhere in this video. <laughs> So when all of that's done, you've submitted all of your work and everything is good, um, you then have your graduation ceremony. And I graduated in the York Minster. Um, in England, you do have to wear, you know, like um, the typical gown. You can rent it or you can buy it. Most students rent it though, because you only need it just for that one day. But you pay a stupid amount of money to rent that because if you don't rent it then you can't attend your own graduation. You're normally only given two tickets as well. So if you have like your mum and your dad and then you know a husband or wife or whoever who wants to come, you've got to choose very carefully who you want to go to your own graduation because you're not necessarily guaranteed to have extra tickets. You can apply for extra tickets but as I said they're not guaranteed. So that was my time at York St. John. I had a fantastic time during my degree. Um, I absolutely love the teachers. They were so helpful. Whenever you needed to meet them and talk about things, they were just so passionate about their topics. I had no complaints whatsoever about the staff at uh, York St. John, only maybe like the admin. They were a bit of a pain sometimes. They're really, really not good with the admin. However, the admin at York St. John were so good in comparison to my experience at Bristol University. So for my master's degree I studied education, uh, more specifically education uh, TESOL, so teaching English to speakers of other languages. And I was a little bit different because I studied part-time so I actually instead of studying for just one year which we normally do in the UK for a master's I studied for two years and I stretched my degree out part-time over two years. Now the problem with that is that the admin staff didn't really quite consider me as like a full student and so they would miss me off emails I was always off email lists for some reason, so they would email about like room changes and updates and I just wouldn't receive those emails and it used to piss me off so much because I used to be waiting outside my lecture room, I would just be, you know, <laughs> waiting, 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 quarter of an hour has passed, nothing has happened, there are none of my classmates around. And I would just be like, what happened? I would go to the desk in the education department and they would say, oh, there's been a room change. Great, well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, there was an email sent out. Well, where's my email? Oh, it'll be in your folder. I remember, guys, I literally stood there with my phone checking the university emails and it was not there. They had not added me onto this email list. So I was missing out on loads of important stuff. And it was so ridiculous that they, they would email really, really important things. So, you know, changes about, uh, I don't know, like deadlines and things like that. And I didn't know because someone was too lazy to take five to 10 minutes of their time during their job 
doing their job and adding me to an email list. So I ended up missing out on a lot of stuff. Now, I also forgot to mention that the reason why I chose to study part-time is because I actually started my business then. So I was running a business and teaching at the same time as studying. So I'm already stressed from my business and then I've got this on top of it. So they were just canceling things and changing things all the time and I couldn't keep up and I needed to know exactly when they were canceling things and when they were doing room changes and so on because that would affect my calendar. It's not like I was, you know, a student that had my calendar completely empty. So if a room change happened or if there was a time change or a day change or whatever, then I could just, you know, change it and it's no problem. Like, I actually ended up missing lessons because they decided to change the day of a lesson and it was just ridiculous. I, I you know, I remember thinking to myself like, well, that lesson was worth £300, gone. Do you know what I mean? It was just such a waste of my time and my money going going to that university um, but that wasn't even the worst part. So during one of my lessons I can still remember how there was this tutor and he was explaining the difference between these two concepts but he brushed over these two concepts so quickly that I couldn't quite understand the difference between them. So I remember I just, you know, put my hand up and I said, I'm really sorry, can you explain the difference between those two again? Because it really wasn't clear. He then walked over to my desk. This was in front of the entire class. He came up to me and he said, there is this thing called Google. You can use it to look for your question. And I thought to myself, why the hell am I paying to be here when one of the tutors here is telling me, go and Google? If you don't understand a concept well enough to explain it simply, then you don't know that concept and you shouldn't be teaching about it to be all smug about it and come up to someone in front of the class and be like, Google it. I just thought that was incredibly unprofessional. I complained about that lecturer. I complained about, you know, his attitude in doing that and the embarrassment it caused and nothing was done. I received no apology from that lecturer. I received no apology from the university. I received nothing. That's the price of going to uh, a top 10 university in England, guys. On top of that, so as I said, I had problems with, you know, running my own business at the same time as studying. And yes, this, this really, really got to me at one point, especially when it was during the second year. So remember, uh, you know, a university master's degree in the UK is normally one year. Mine was stretched over two. In the second year when I was doing my dissertation, where is it? Here it is. <laughs> when I was writing this bad boy, I got very, very, very ill. Um, I mean, I was diagnosed with vertigo. Maybe I still remember the name. Benign proximal positional vertigo, I think I was diagnosed with. So I was diagnosed with that and my trigger for this type of vertigo that I had was every time I laid down, so at night I would go to bed and every time I laid down in bed the room would just start spinning. It was horrible. So I got that and I was also suffering from really really bad chest pains. So I was, you know, suffering from headaches from the stress. I was essentially suffering from, you know, the strange dizziness, like it was, uh, it was like being drunk. It was just so horrible and I couldn't make it stop. And then I had chest pains and I had this feeling like I wanted to be sick all the time, but I couldn't. So I kept thinking like, what's wrong with me? So I finally went to the doctor and <laughs> yeah, she diagnosed me with uh, vertigo and acid reflux. Now the problem with acid reflux is, you know, it's essentially your stomach acid coming up and it's just burning your esophagus. So that was very, very painful and that's why I had the sensation of wanting to vomit because it's essentially my stomach acid coming up. But 
I couldn't vomit it, you know? Um, and the chest pain was being caused by the acid. So it was just burning all here, just my esophagus, my throat, everything. Everything was on fire. It was just so much pain. Um, so she gave me some medication for that. And <laughs> I still remember saying to this doctor, what do you think has caused this? Um, you know, with the vertigo and everything. Um, is it, you know, because I'm... I don't know, drinking too much coffee or something like that. And she said, no, no, um, it's normally caused by stress. Is there anything that you're stressed about at this moment? And I said, yes, um, I'm really stressed because, you know, I have my dissertation, this. <laughs> I have my dissertation. I have my, my other classes and my other assignments to do. I'm also running a business at the same time. I'm teaching almost every single day. And it became just way too much. And now the mental health at Bristol University, the mental health support, I should say, at Bristol University is really not very good. The doctor turned around to me and she said, why are you working at the same time as studying? Because I've got bills to pay because I've got to actually pay for my masters, because I've got rent to pay. <laughs> you know, what kind of question is that? It was just so stupid. Like, the support for mental health um, at Bristol University is so terrible. Um, friends of mine, they went to, to go and get some advice for, for mental health and some support with, with mental health, and they were put on a waiting list for months before they could go and see someone and then they were given i think it was five sessions it may be more it may be less i really don't remember but they were given a certain number of sessions where they could go and talk to someone and that's it that is the help that bristol university provide for their students i was so shocked and so disappointed because the support that york st john gave to their students was far 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 better and considering that Bristol University is supposed to be one of the top 10 universities in the UK, one of the top 30 at the time of me going and studying there, <laughs> one of the top 30 universities in the world, it was shit in terms of the kind of support that it gave. I thought it was absolutely disgusting and appalling how they, how they uh, treat students there and also how they treated me how they treated the international students. They really, really, really didn't care. And I'm just so, so disappointed that a university in the UK that's supposed to be one of the best treats students like that. It's not just the admin staff that treat their students like that, but it's also some of the teaching staff. Now, I have talked about Bristol University in a very negative way, but there were some really, really good points. So I know that a lot of the lecturers, the majority of the lecturers were really, really nice. They were very passionate about their topic. They loved their topic. My supervisor who helped me with the, the, the dissertation that I've shown about 200 times now, she was fantastic and I was so sad to find out that she was retiring the year that I was finishing because she was just great. Um, when I finished my dissertation she did push me to go and like study a PhD and I said no. <laughs> I said to her, no, I think I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> And here I am. <laughs> so I gave up a life of, I didn't give it up, I just chose not to go down that route. But I chose not to go down the academic route and do a PhD because I wanted to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> Which sounds so crazy when I say it, like, oh yeah, I quit a life of academics, you know, to, <laughs> to make YouTube videos. But it's something that makes me so much happier. And just, you know, talking about my YouTube channel, I, I feel really happy about that. When I look at PhDs and I talk to my friends who are doing PhDs, I just think, I, d I don't want that life. <laughs> I think I'm done with academics. Maybe in the future I'll do a PhD, I don't know. But 
I think I'm pretty much done with academics for now and I just want to focus on on my YouTube channel. So that was it basically, that was my university experience. Um, I'm gonna guess that this video has been going on for about half an hour now so I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> Um, but I do hope that you've enjoyed this video, that you've learned something about me, that you've learned something about my experience. If you do have any other questions about the university education in the UK, do let me know in the comments and I will answer those. Or if you have any other questions about this video or about my experience at uni, do let me know, put them in the comments and I will, I will reply. All in all though, I did enjoy my experience of university, even at Bristol University. I did enjoy the experience. I've come away with some really, really good friends. I've come away with so much knowledge about uh, the topics that I studied. And I guess that's the main thing, right? I mean, you pay to go to university to learn about these things and that's what I did. So <laughs> I'm really, really happy about that. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention though is what my dissertation topics were about. So if you are curious to know what my dissertation topics were, um, my topic for my masters was entitled Susan, open the window please, a study into the development and perceptions of L2 English learners in the mitigation of requests. <laughs> so I basically looked at how English learners uh, develop and acquire, or if it is possible to acquire, pragmatic competence in requests. That's basically what I looked at. For my undergrad degree, my dissertation was about, it was about like the perceptions of English learners and whether they believed that um, you know, they should be taught non-standard forms of pronunciation and non-standard forms of, of English and non-standard forms of grammar. So yeah, that was that. That's hiding somewhere in a book. So I'm sure I could have found it for this video, but I couldn't. It must be deep in a book somewhere. But anyway, that's what that topic was about. As I said, any questions about this video, do let me know in the comments and I'll be very happy to answer them. I hope you have a lovely week. I'm gonna go rest my voice now and go grab a cup of tea. You've probably definitely finished your cup of tea now. <laughs> if not, it's probably cold, so go finish it. I will see you next week. Bye bye guys.